Hey friends, it's Mel. Welcome to my kitchen and welcome to another week's worth of dinners. I hope you have had a good week and I hope you're ready for some meal inspiration. I've got a couple of favorites again this week and I've got a real special dessert to share with you too. I hope this week's dinners will remind you of some things you might want to have or give you some new ideas if you're just running short on them. So sit back, relax, take a load off friends, and wind down with a glass of sweet tea and I'll do the cooking. The first day of our week started out with a big pot of pinto beans. You've seen me do this a bunch of times when I am working. I like to put them in the crock pot and let them cook when I'm gone and I'll usually start out the night before. I just look over my beans real good and you're just looking for any bad beans or rocks or anything and then give them a really good rinse in the sink. And I actually started my beans the night before, about 10 or 11 o'clock before I went to bed, cooking them on high in the crock pot. And I just let them cook all night long, and then I turned them down the next morning to low and let them cook all day. The main thing with pinto beans in the crock pot is plenty of water. So I'm covering them up here with probably I don't even know how many cups of water. I've got it <laughs> a lot over the top of them. And I put plenty of salt down in them. And I do put either some kind of fat. I have put oil in these. Sometimes I will use bacon grease. I didn't have any ham. I love to season my pinto beans with ham. It gives the best flavor of anything. But anywho, I swore, that's how I cooked them up. Then when I got home, I checked them again just to make sure they're okay. And I cut them back on high because I like my bean soup to get a little bit dark and thick. So I just went ahead and kicked it back up on high. Cut up some potatoes. I did scrub them real good. And I like to leave the skins on them if I can. So that's what I did here tonight. And I just cooked them, fried them up. I like to season mine up with salt and pepper. And usually here I throw in some garlic powder and onion powder. Every now and again I'll throw some Italian seasoning in on them, but I didn't do that this night. With pinto beans, I just like to stick to the basics. And I'm just putting a little bit of cornbread together and I use the Martha White cornmeal mix and I just use that recipe on the back. Sometimes I will throw in some flour, maybe a third of a cup or so, and a lot of times I'll throw in a big spoonful of mayonnaise too. And the cast iron skillet that I like to make my cornbread in, I'm frying my potatoes in it. So I just used an old cake pan, and you know, it works up fine. I love cast iron, it's my favorite, but if you don't have it, don't think you can't make good cornbread. I opened up a can of these Margie Holmes seasoned green beans, heated them up real good, and I do drain them off pretty good too. Let's plate them up. This was delicious, and y'all know I like a big spoonful of mayonnaise to mix into my pinto beans, and those fried potatoes were yummy. On Tuesday night, I just really had a hankering for some tuna salad, 
So I'll just show you real quick how I make my tuna salad. I'm using two of the smaller cans of tuna. So I'm just dicing up about a quarter of an onion to go in it. Very, very thin. Very, very minced up. I have this nifty little contraption here that I use to really get all of the liquid drained off of my canned tuna. I don't remember where I found this. Probably at some random kitchen store in like a strip mall or something in Pigeon Forge. You know how they have those stores in there, that Smoky Mountain Knife store where they just have a little bit of everything. But I have just used this thing for years. And you just push it down into the can. It's the perfect size for that. And uh, pineapple, the small pineapple cans, it fits them good. And you just press it as hard as you can. And it really squeezes all of the water out of those cans. see how good and flaky it came out. I've told y'all before that I'm just a very simple eater. I season things and use very minimal ingredients and I just use some mayonnaise and mustard, sweet pickle relish, and onions. This is pretty much my base recipe for chicken salad, tuna salad, potato salad, macaroni salad, all the salads kind of start with these few ingredients for me. I'll add a little extra here and there of different things, but that's just a good base for anything you're starting with. And I'll just start to mix it up and you kind of can get a feel for if you have enough mayonnaise, if you need more. It's always better to start with less and add more. And I just about always add more mayonnaise because I like mayonnaise. Sometimes I'll throw a little onion powder in there if I don't have onion. But just taste it and see how it is and adjust accordingly. I believe I put a little bit more mustard and some more sweet relish in this. That done it up for me and I'm just making me a sandwich on just plain old bread. Sometimes you just want something plain and simple. It tasted great to me. Now the next night I'm going to start out making a little tartar sauce. And I just start with about a half a cup of mayonnaise. And just a little tiny squirt, maybe half a teaspoon of lemon juice. And then about half a teaspoon of mustard. And just another little bit of that sweet pickle relish. And I do try to get as much of the juice off of the relish as I can. And I am just making enough up for this meal. And I'm going to be doing salmon patties tonight. So I'm real excited about that. I've made tuna patties on my channel before. And I was telling y'all how I just could not stand to mess with the canned salmon. I hadn't looked at canned salmon in so long. I didn't know they had it without the bones and the skin. And y'all told me that. And I have had these two cans of salmon just waiting for me to use them. So I'm going to start prepping my ingredients for the patties. And I like to put either onion or I had some green onion here. And I like to put that in there. And here's that salmon, skinless, boneless. And it was. It was perfect. You see, I drained it off real good just like I do my tuna and look how nice and flaky it is and I'm gonna start with an egg kind of mush it up around in there and that will be a good binder and I'm using a little salt and a fair amount of black pepper putting in some mayonnaise again and 
and a little bit of this green onion. Now you can use crushed up crackers, you can use flour, cornmeal, you can use any kind of breading that you want to. Um, in salmon patties, I do like to start mixing my patties up first and then come back and put in whatever the breading mixture is. And in tonight's case, I had this yellow cornmeal. I had got this for some reason, this little canister of this. It wasn't a cornmeal mix, but it's just plain cornmeal. And uh, so I thought, I need to use that, so I just pulled that out. I needed to use it up, so I just pulled it out and used it in this tonight. I don't like it as much as cornmeal mix, but it really tasted good. It was very yellow, but it still tasted great. And I had done such a good job getting all the water off my salmon. It was almost too dry. I really had to work to moisten it back up. And I'm just taking my favorite cast iron skillet and getting some oil nice and hot in it. And I'm just making little small patties. You set them in there let them cook up on one side and you don't turn them until they're good and held together and browning up on that first side then once I turn them just like potato cakes I smush them down after I get them turned that first time and the cornmeal helps it to get so crispy and that is one of the things that I love about using cornmeal in these is it really does give it that extra little crunchiness and I think I ended up frying up two skillets worth of these this was a real treat for me I had could not even remember the last time I had a real salmon patty look how pretty and brown they're getting just checking that other side and <clears throat> Making sure everything is looking good, get it a little crisper. To go along with this tonight, I just made a box of macaroni and cheese. We had some leftover greens, and I had some little crispy round, like tater tot things in the freezer that I needed to get used up. So I just threw those in the oven. This was absolutely delicious. Nothing like good old salmon patties. Now, the last meal for you is a crock pot meal. And of course, you always want to start out spraying that crock pot with nonstick spray. And I have four boneless pork loin chops that I pulled out of the freezer. They were been in the refrigerator all night. And I'm just going to put them down in the bottom of my crock pot. And I'm taking a can of cream of chicken soup and just trying to spread it out over the top of them. And then I'm going to take a pack of ranch seasoning and I had accidentally bought a box of ranch dip but it's the same stuff it was fine and I'm just gonna sprinkle that over the top if you wanted to mess up another bowl you could mix that together in it but I wasn't into that this was before I left for work so I didn't want any dishes and then I do put the lid on this and I cooked it on low all day long it was about eight hours now it was so funny because the day that I made this, my friend Kat, I watched a video that she had up for um, Vlogtober, and she had done this same pork chop meal, and she fried corn. I had to have it. I had to have it. So I come home, and I just took a third of a stick of butter and melted it into my cast iron skillet. Then I took one can of sweet corn whole kernel sweet corn and drained it off and threw it in the skillet and you don't add any other water it just starts to cook down 
you just keep stirring into it a little bit. The only seasonings that I put in it are salt and pepper. And you can see the progression of it. It'll just get more golden and brown. It'll begin to pop around a little bit in the skillet on you. It's just the best roasted skillet corn ever. When I saw Kat make this meal, I had already planned on having green beans and mashed potatoes with it. And that is exactly what she had in her video and this skillet corn. So I had to have it. I'll leave Kat's channel and her video linked down below. Her channel is called Southern Farm and Kitchen. And you go check her out. You'll love Kat. We've collabed before and she's one of my best friends here. This was delicious. You can see all day it's cooked up in that liquid and it has stayed moist and all those wonderful ranch seasonings are on top of that pork chop and then you've got that gravy that's cooked up. This was absolutely delicious. And it seems like it's been a while since I brought you dessert. So we're going to start out with one cup of apple cider and I'm just going to cook that up on medium high heat. I'm going to boil it down till it reduces to about a fourth of a cup and then I'm going to stick it in the refrigerator to cool because it needs to be completely cool to go on into this and I'm making apple cider donuts. You start out with a fourth of a cup or half a stick of softened butter and then you're going to use a cup of just regular sugar and you're going to beat that together pretty good. This is my first attempt at making donuts at home. My daughters had got me a donut pan for Mother's Day and I had not used it yet and I was bound to determine to get that thing used. You're going to add in two eggs now and then you're going to beat that in to your butter and sugar. Once you get that mixed in really well, you're going to add in a half a cup of buttermilk. And I think I've shared with y'all before that I just make my own buttermilk out of regular milk. You can just add you a big spoonful of white vinegar into it and let it set and you've got buttermilk. And you're also going to add in that fourth a cup of apple cider that you've reduced. Get all that mixed in really well. And I used self-rising flour in this so I didn't have to stir in any baking soda or any of that kind of stuff, baking powder. So I'm just going to start putting that flour over a little bit at a time into my wet mixture. Once I get a pretty fair amount of it over into here, I'm going to stop and add my spices. And I did use about a teaspoon of cinnamon. Called for half a teaspoon of nutmeg, but I just threw in a half a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. It has cinnamon and nutmeg and cloves and all those good things in it. I sub it all the time for nutmeg. I try to get the most bang for my buck. I don't have room for a whole lot of spices, so I like to try to get things that have everything I like in one. I'm going to start mixing all of that back in, and then I'm going to add in that remaining flour. Y'all, I am not a baker. So please don't judge me. I am a cooker, not a baker. As this is too many steps for me, too many moving parts, too much of a process. I love to eat them, but I don't like to do it. But that being said, 
these things are really good and I might do them again but I am putting all of my batter down into a big old gallon size Ziploc bag and I'm going to use it like a piping bag and I have my little donut pan and I've got it sprayed really good with some Baker's Joy it's non-stick spray that has the flour in it and here we go I'm scared you're supposed to fill these about halfway full but I mean I have no control over what's going in there just whatever comes out of that little tube there is what's going in <laughs> I did try to smooth out that side of them just a little bit and there they are they cooked at um, 350 degrees for 12 minutes and I did check them make sure they were done one of them looked big it didn't even have a hole I had put so much in there but I just wiped out my pan and went another round you're supposed to be able to get 18 donuts out of this batter well I got 16 I believe it was once I had got them out and they were had cooled a few minutes I took some melted butter and I coated each side in the melted butter and then I dunked them in some cinnamon sugar and I just set them over there on a wire rack to get all dry I was mixing up a glaze for him and I just used about a cup of powdered sugar and I just used the apple cider I don't know how much you know how it is when you're making these powdered sugar glazes you just pour a little and mix and then pour a little bit more but I did want it kind of runny because I was going to drizzle it over all of them but I had run out of the cinnamon sugar I mixed up and I just had like three or four donuts left so I just wanted to like dunk the whole face of them in this stuff too. So there goes the ones that don't have any cinnamon sugar on them. I feel like the Dunkin Donut Man. It's time to make the donuts. <laughs> like I said, I was not enjoying this because I'm just not good at it. It's a lot of steps for me. But when I got through with them, I sure did enjoy it. Things are intimidating, but you know what? You guys are so encouraging to me. Like, I'm just a cook. I'm just a home cook. I just make things for my family I don't invent recipes or any of that stuff but you guys give me the courage and the encouragement to look at something and say oh, I could do that I think that my friends would like to see this I could do this and I just appreciate that so much about you all you make me feel like I could just cook anything so I'll try anything but look how pretty they turned out I was so proud of these and they are so delicious. My mama had had an apple cider donut at an apple orchard the day before, and she said mine were better than what she had. But she is my mama, you know. <laughs> and I made her donuts. So, <laughs> guys, I just appreciate y'all so much. I thank you for giving me your time. I do not take it for granted that you set aside time every week to watch my videos and see me stumble through this process of showing you what I've made this week. You all mean the world to me. And if nobody's told you, you're special. And I appreciate you. I can't wait to see you back Wednesday. I'll have a grocery haul. And then I've got a super special video next Sunday night. I don't want you to miss it, so be sure to turn on your notifications. And guys, until the next time I see you, I send you love from my kitchen. <laughs>